General Principles for Taxation Law Reviewer 2021 Concept and Purpose of Taxation Number 1. Definition Taxation is defined as the power inherent in every sovereign state to impose a charge or burden upon persons, properties, or rights to raise revenues for the use and support of the government to enable it to discharge its appropriate function. It is also defined in the American jurisprudence as the power by which an independent state through its lawmaking body raises and accumulates revenue from its inhabitants to pay the necessary expenses of the government. Furthermore, it is also defined as merely a way or mode of apportioning the cost of government among those who in some measures are privileged to enjoy its benefits and must bear its burden. American Jurisprudence 342 uh, Further, in cases in the Supreme Court, it is described as a destructive power which interferes with the personal and property rights of the people and takes from them a portion of their property from the support of the government. Paseo Realty and Development Corporation versus CA, GR number 1192628-2004. In Season versus Ancheta, GR number L-59431-1984, however, the SC acknowledged that the due process clause may be invoked where a taxing statute is so arbitrary that it finds no support in the Constitution, such as when the tax imposition amounts to a confiscation of property. Taxation has three elements. Number one, it is an enforced proportional con deep contribution from persons and properties. Second, it is imposed by the state by virtue of its sovereignty. And third, it is levied for the support of the government. PCGG versus Kuhanko, GR number 1470622642001. What is the purpose of taxation? The first is its primary or revenue raising purpose. Taxation is the power by which the sovereign raises revenue to defray the necessary expenses of government. Taxes provide the funds or property with which to promote the general welfare and protection of the whole citizenry. The secondary or the second purpose, or what we call secondary or non-revenue or special or regulatory or sumptuary purpose, Taxation is also used for regulatory purposes. It is used to attain non-revenue objectives and pursue policy decisions. For example, regulations of activities. Taxation could be a tool to implement the state's police power, such as imposing a tax on sale, lease, or disposition of videograms primarily to answer the need the regulation of the video industry due in part to rampant film piracy, violation of intellectual property rights, and proliferation of pornography. TO versus Videogram Regulatory Board, GR number 75967, 1987. And B, promotion of general welfare. Taxation is done not merely to raise revenues to support the government, but also to provide means for the rehabilitation and stabilization of a threatened industry, like Coco Levy funds, which is so affected with public interest. PCGD versus Kohanko, GR number 147062-64-2001, and in Lutz versus Araneta, GR number L-7859-1955, Tax was imposed for the protection and promotion of sugar industry. The court held that its promotion, protection, and advancement redounds greatly to the general welfare, hence valid. The nature and characteristics of 
taxation. As to the nature, first, the power of taxation is inherent in sovereignty as an incident or attribute, therefore, being essential to the existence of independent government. It exists apart from the Constitution and is not being expressly conferred by the people. Second, it is legislative in character. It is generally not delegated to the executive or administrative departments. Third, it is subject to constitutional and inherent limitations. Exceptions where delegation is allowed. 1. To local government units or LGUs with respect to matters of local concern as promulgated in Section 5 and 20 of the Local Government Code as well as Article 10 of the Constitution. When it is allowed by the Constitution, Section 28, Paragraph 2, Article 6 of the Constitution, and when the delegation relates merely to an administrative implementation that may call for some degree of discretionary power under a set of sufficient standards expressed by the law. Palais versus Auditor General, GR number L-23825-1965, or implied from the policy and purpose of the law. Maceda versus Makaraig, GR number 88291-1993. What are the characteristics of taxation? First, it must be used for public purpose. A tax shall be considered to have been utilized for public purpose if the welfare of the nation or the greater portion of its population has benefited from it. Gomez v. Palomar, GR number L-236451968 and Philippine Guarantee Corporation Incorporated v. CIR, GR number L-22074-1965 And second, it is the strongest of all the inherent powers of the government. In Season v. Ancheta, GR number L-59431-1984 However, this does not mean that it is superior to the other inherent powers of the government. Third, it is territorial in operations. The power to tax can only be exercised within the territorial jurisdiction of a taxing authority, American jurisprudence, except when it is subject to international committee or there exists privity of relationship between the taxing state and the object of tax. Hence, in Mitsubishi Corporation v. CIR, GR No. 175772-2017, it was held that the income tax and branch profit remittance tax paid by Mitsubishi was erroneously collected considering that the obligation to pay the same had already been assumed by the Philippine government by virtue of its exchange of notes with the Japanese government. Fourth, it is comprehensive as it covers persons, things, or property, privilege, occupation, profession, or business, and transactions or activities. Fifth, it is generally pecuniary in nature, that is, payable in money. However, a law may prescribe other form or kind of payment such as back pay certificate. Terona versus the City Treasurer of Manila, GR number L-24607-1968. Six, it is plenary in nature. As a general rule, the scope of the legislative power to tax is unlimited and plenary. Acknowledging it in its very nature, no limits. The principal check against its abuse is to be found only in the responsibility of the legislature. Creba Incorporated versus Romulo, GR number 160756, March 9, 2010. The legislature, therefore, basically determines... Number one, the subjects, persons, property, occupation, exercises, or privileges to be taxed. Number two, the method of collection. Number three, purpose for which the tax shall be levied. Number four, apportionment of tax. 
or whether for general application or limited to a particular locality. Number five, amount or rate. Number six, kind of tax to be collected. And number seven, situs of taxation. The legislator also grants legislative tax exemptions or condonations and specifies or provides for the administrative as well as the judicial remedies that either the government or the taxpayer can avail. Petron versus Chianco, GR number 158881-2008. Now we have to distinguish tax from other forms of exactions. As to custom duty or tariff, the coverage of tax is more on comprehensive than customs duty. While customs duty, its coverage only is on importation or export of goods. The object of tax are persons, properties, and others. While custom duties only has the object of goods imported or exported. Distinguish between tax from a toll. The kind of demand for the tax is it is a demand of sovereignty, while toll is a demand of ownership. The purpose of tax is to support government, while toll is for the collection for the use of the property. The amount collected for the tax has no limit. It depends on the need of the government, while for the toll, fair return of the cost of the property or improvement. How about license fee? The ta tax, the source of authority for tax is the exercise of taxing power of the government, while for the license fee, it emanates from the police power of the state. The purpose of tax is to raise revenue while the purpose of license fee is to regulate or for regulation. The object of tax is, again, persons, property, and privilege, and others, while license fee only is on the right to exercise a privilege, such as uh, having a license for uh, practicing a certain profession. It is an exercise of a privilege. And the amount for taxation it has no limit, but license fees only necessary to carry out the regulation. The distinction lies in the primary purpose of tax as against other kinds of exactions. First, the primary purpose of license fee is for regulation and the excess of the amount collected from the cost to carry out the regulation should be minimal and incidental. Tax's primary purpose, or at least one of the real and substantial purposes, is to raise revenue. If amount is too high for regulation and or the amount levied is not related to cost of regulation, it would be a tax. As uh, we can see in the second dairy purpose of taxation for regulation. Purpose of distinction, limitations and exemptions apply only to one and not to the other. Example, exemption from taxation does not include exemption from fees. A non-stop not-for-profit educational institution, which is exempt from taxes, is not exempt from payment of building permit fee and local clearance fee, as the said charges are regulatory fees and not taxes. Angeles University versus City of Angeles, GR number 189999, June 27, 2012. Again, royalty fees are regulatory fees. Clark Special Economic Zone or CSEZ 
imposes payments on the movement of petroleum, fuel to and from the economic zone. Specifically, CSEZ provides for the payment of accreditation fees, annual inspection fees, royalty fees, and gate pass fees. Chevron is a domestic company located within the economic zone. CSEZ bills Chevron for royalty fees at 50 centavos per liter. Chevron Philippines versus BCDA, GR number 173863, September 15, 2010. The imposition of capital contribution component of 10 pesos per bag was an exercise by the state of its taxation power. While it is true that the power of taxation can be used as an implement of police power, the primary purpose of the levy is revenue generation. If the purpose is primarily revenue, or if revenue is at least one of the real and substantial purposes, then the exaction is properly called a tax. Planters Product Incorporated versus Fertifield Corporation, GR number 16606. 2008. There is no logic or justification in exacting employment permit fee from aliens. The imposition is not regulatory but a revenue measure. It follows then that the permit fee is essentially a tax for the purpose of raising money under the guise of regulation. Villegas versus Wheat Chai, GR number L. Dash 29646-1978 Special Assessment versus Tax Tax is imposed on persons, properties, and others, while special assessment is imposed only on land. Tax is imposed because for public purpose regardless who or what will benefit. But tax assessment is imposed because of public improvement that benefits the land. The purpose of which of tax is to support the general purposes of government, while the purpose of special assessment is contribution to cost or public improvement. It is imposed as to tax. It is imposed on regular exaction, while special assessment only exceptional as to time and locality. The basis for taxation is of necessity, while special assessment is based on the benefits obtained. How about that? The source of taxation is the law or legal obligation, while debt is based on contract. By nature, tax is personal, while debt is assignable. Tax generally not subject to compensation or set off, while debt may be subject of compensation or set off. The effect then of non-payment is imprisonment as sanction for tax, while no imprisonment for non-payment of debt. We have to distinguish the three eminent power of the state, the power of taxation, police power, and eminent domain. Now, as to concept, tax is the power to enforce contribution to raise funds for the government. Police power, on the other hand, is the power to make and implement laws for the general welfare. And for eminent domain, it is the power to take private property for public use with just compensation. As to scope, Tax is plenary or comprehensive, while police power, while broader in application, general power to make and implement laws, while eminent domain is merely a power to take 
private property for public use. As to exercising authority, tax is exercised by the national and local governments. Police power, on the other hand, is exercised by the national government or its political subdivisions. While eminent domain may be granted to public service companies or public utilities. The purpose of tax is to raise revenues, while police power is exercised to promote public welfare through regulation and as to eminent domain, the taking of property for public use. In taxation, the amount of imposition has no limit. In police power, it is limited to the cost of regulation, issuance of license, or surveillance, while in eminent domain, no limit imposed, but the amount should be based on the fair market value of the property. As to effect, tax becomes part of public fund, while in police power, restraint on the injurious use of property, and in eminent domain, transfer of right to the property. Who are the persons affected in tax? It applies to all persons, property, and exercises that may be subject there too, as well as in police power. But in eminent domain, only particularly or particular property is covered. How about the superiority of contracts over tra taxes? Contracts may be impaired unless first, government is party to the contract granting exemption or it involves a franchise. In police power, contracts may be impaired. What are the benefits received in taxes? In the power to tax, protection and general benefit from the government as benefit. While in police power, no direct or immediate benefit but only such as may arise from the maintenance of a healthy economic standard of society. In eminent domain, just compensation equivalent to fair market value of the property. In relation to constitution, the power to tax is subject to certain constitutional limitations. Police power also is subjected to certain constitutional limitations as well as imminent domain is also subject to certain constitutional limitations. Now, the theory and basis of taxation. First theory is the lifeblood theory. Taxes are the lifeblood of the government. Without revenue raised from taxation, the government will not survive, resulting in detriment to society. Without taxes, the government would be paralyzed for lack of motive power to activate and operate it. Commissioner versus Alge, GR number L-28896, 1988. Second, the necessity theory. The power of taxation proceeds upon the theory that the existence of government is a necessity, that it cannot continue without means to pay its expenses, and that for those means, it has the right to compel all citizens and property within its limit to contribute. And the benefits received theory, or also known as symbiotic relationship theory. The basis of taxation is found in the reciprocal duties of protection and support between the state and its inhabitants. In return for this contribution, the taxpayer receives the general advantages and protection which the government affords the taxpayer and his property. What is the jurisdiction over subjects and objects? 
the person or property tax must be within the competent authority's taxing jurisdiction. Tax is based on the situs or source or territoriality or the location of economic activity, location of property, source of income, citizenship, and residence. Principles of a sound tax system. First, fiscal adequacy. The sources of tax revenue should coincide with and approximate the needs of government expenditures and their variations. Chavez versus Umpin, GR number 767789090. Second, theoretical justice. The tax system should be fair to the average taxpayer and be based upon the ability to pay. The rule of taxation shall be uniform and equitable. The Congress shall evolve a progressive system of taxation. Section 28, Paragraph 1, Article 6 of the Constitution. And third, administrative feasibility. The tax system should be capable of being properly and efficiently administered by the government and enforced with the least inconvenience to the taxpayer. Example, creditable withholding tax, which is a system of advanced collection of payees income tax liability. Non-observance of the canon of administrative visibility will not render a tax imposition invalid, except to the extent that specific constitutional or statutory limitations are impaired. Diaz v. Secretary of Finance, GR No. 1930007-2011, which dealt with the inconvenience of imposing VAT on toll fees. Note that non-observance of these principles will not automatically render a tax law unconstitutional or invalid. A tax law will continue to be valid even if it does not observe the principles of fiscal adequacy and administrative visibility, since the Constitution does not expressly require so. However, a tax law may be held unconstitutional if it runs afoul of the principle of theoretical justice since the Constitution expressly requires that tax laws should be uniform and equitable. Inherent and Constitutional Limitations on Taxation The power of taxation is the strongest of all powers of the government. Nevertheless, effective limitations thereon may be imposed by the people through the Constitution. Accordingly, no matter how broad and encompassing the power of taxation, it is still subject to inherent and constitutional limitations. Number one, inherent limitation. A. Public purpose. The test. Whether the proceeds will be used for something which is the duty of the state to provide. The public purpose of tax law must exist at the time of its enactment. The money raised by taxation can be expended only for public purposes and not for the advantage of private individuals. Therefore, since the appropriation sought a private purpose, it is null and void. Pascual v. Secretary of Public Works, GR No. L-10405-1960 The term public use has acquired a more comprehensive coverage. To the literal import of the term signifying strict use or employment by the public has been added the broader notion of indirect public benefit or advantage. Sumulong so, versus Guerrero, GR number L-48685-1987. B. Inherently legislative. Power of taxation cannot be delegated. This contemplates the power to determine kind, object, extent, amount, coverage, and situs of tax. It must be distinguished from power to, to assess and collect, which is exercised by the executive through the Bureau of Internal Revenue. However, it may be exceptionally delegated when number 1. The delegation shall not contravene any constitutional provision or inherent limitations of taxation. 
Number two, it is effected either by the Constitution or by validly enacted legislative measures or statute. And number three, except when expressly provided by the Constitution, it should only be in favor of the local legislative body of the local or municipal government concern. As a general rule, the power to tax is exclusively vested in that legislative body, hence it cannot be delegated. Delegata potestas non potes delegari. Exceptions 1. Delegation to local governments it is in line with the principle that the power to create municipal corporations for purposes of local self-government carries with it the power to confer the power to tax on such local governments. 2. Delegation to the President Certain aspects of the taxing process that are not legislative in character may be vested to him or the President. Example, Delegation of tariff powers by Congress to the President under the Flexible Tariff Clause, Section 28, Paragraph 2, Article 6 of the Constitution, and Delegation of Emergency Powers, Section 23, Paragraph 2, Article 6 of the Constitution. In the case of Abakada Guru v. Executive Secretary Ermita, GR No. 1680562005, the court held that the Congress does not abdicate its function or unduly delegate its power when it describes what job must be done, who must do it, and what is the scope of his authority. There is no undue delegation of legislative power but only of the discretion as to the execution of a law. Number three, delegation to administrative agencies. Administrative agencies are authorized to fix within specified limits tariff rates, imports or export quotas, tonnage and wharfage, dues, and other duties or imports. Letter C. Tax is territorial. See discussions on situs of taxation in the next sections. D. International Committee A state must recognize the generally accepted tenets of international law. They must accord each other as sovereign equals. This limits the authority of a government to effectively impose taxes on a sovereign state and its instrumentalities, as well as on its property held and activities undertaken in that capacity. According to the uh, author Vito, for example, a property of a foreign state or government may not be taxed by another state. A state that has contracted valid international obligations is bound to make its legislations those modifications that ensure granting of reliefs under tax treaties. Deutsche Bank versus CIR GR number 1885502010. Exemption of government entities, agencies, and instrumentalities. The rationale of this exemption is if the government taxes itself or if local government unit tax the national government, it would be akin to taking money from one pocket to another. Entities or agencies exercising sovereign functions, acta iuri impiri, are tax exempt unless expressly taxed. Agencies performing proprietary functions are subject to tax unless expressly exempted. Government owned and controlled corporations performing proprietary functions are subject to taxes except those exempted under Section 27C of RA 8424 as amended by RA 9337 and RA 10963, namely, number 1, GSIS, 2, SSS, 3, PHIC, and 4, the local water districts. The amendment reduced the list of exempt entities by excluding therein the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation. 
Instrumentality of the national government is exempt from real property tax. MIAA versus CA, GR number 155650-2006. However, an instrumentality of the national government can be subject to tax if there is a statutory authority to do so and if there is no express provision against such act. Chief Justice Hilario Davide Jr. in the case of MCIAA v. Marcos, GR number 120082 in 1996, has stated that nothing can prevent Congress from decreeing that even instrumentalities or agencies of the government performing governmental functions may be subject to tax. Number two, constitutional limitations of taxation. A. Provisions directly affecting taxation. Prohibition against imprisonment for non-payment of poll tax. Section 20, Article 3 of the Constitution. However, the taxpayer can still be made to pay fines and penalties for non-payment. A poll tax is also known as cedula or residence tax. But in the United States, it usually means the payment of tax to exercise the right of suffrage. Taxpayer may be imprisoned for non-payment of other kinds of tax where the law so expressly provides. Uniformity and Equality of Taxation, Section 28, Paragraph 1 of Article 6 of the Constitution. Uniformal, uniformity is described as all articles or properties of the same class tax at the same rate. Eastern Theatrical Corporation versus Alfonso, GR number L-11041949. Equality means an appointment must be more or less just in the light of the taxpayer's ability to shoulder tax burden. The Equal Protection Clause refers to like treatment in like circumstances. The Uniformity and Equality Clause refers to the proper relative treatment for tax purposes of persons in like circumstances. Section 28, Paragraph 1, Article 6 provides that the Congress shall evolve a progressive system of taxation. Hence, the Constitution does not really prohibit a regressive system of taxation. A progressive system of taxation means that as a resources of the taxpayer become higher, the tax rate likewise increases. It is based on the ability to pay. Grant by Congress of authority to the President to impose tariff rates or the Flexible Tariff Clause, Section 28, Article, uh, Paragraph 2 of Article 6 of the Constitution. It includes import and export quotas, tonnage, and wharfage dues aside from tariff rates. It is delegated by the Congress. It is through a law, the Tariff and Customs Code, has provided for what has been termed as the Flexible Tariff Clause, authorizing the President to modify import duties, Section 401 of the Tariff and Customs Code. And it is subject to congressional limits and restrictions within the framework of National Development Program. Prohibition against taxation of religious, charitable, and educational entities or the exemptions from real property tax. Section 28, Paragraph 3, Article 6 of the Constitution. Exemption under Section 28, Paragraph 3, Article 6 pertains only to property tax or RPT, real property tax, who are exempted? non stock non-profit educational institutions. As to revenues, they are exempt as long as it is used actually, directly, and exclusively, or with the acronym ADE, for educational purposes regardless of its source. Section 4, Paragraph 3, Article 14 of the Constitution. It can also be found in the 
Supreme Court decision of the LSU versus CIR in 2016. As to the assets of non-stock, non-profit educational institutions, they are exempt from RPP as long as they are used ADA, actually, directly and exclusively for educational purpose. As to non-stock, non-profit hospitals, their revenues are exempt from income tax if they are organized, operated exclusively for charitable purposes and no part of its net income or asset inures to the benefit of any member, organizer, and others. Section 30E of the NIRC Income from real or personal properties or from activities conducted for profit regardless of the disposition made of such income, shall be subject to income tax. Section 30, last paragraph, NIRC. As to the assets of non-stock non-profit hospitals, it is exempt from RPT as long as they are used actually, directly, and exclusively for charitable purposes. Again, Section 28, Paragraph 3 of Article 6 of the Constitution. As to non or other non-stock, non-profit charitable institution, the revenues are exempt provided that is organized and operated exclusively for charitable purposes and no part of its net income or asset in use to the benefit of any members, organizers, and etc. Section 30, Paragraph E and IRC. Income from real or personal properties or from activities conducted for profit, regardless of the disposition made of such income, shall be subject to income tax. And as to the assets of other non-stock, non-profit charitable institution, they are exempt as long as the property is ADE used for charitable purposes. For proprietary non-profit hospital and educational institution, the revenues are exempt from income tax if they are organized, operated exclusively for charitable purposes, and no part of its net income or asset in use to the benefit of any member, organizer, etc. If the non-profit hospital or educational institution earns income from its for-profit activities, it will retain exemption charitable but the income from for-profit activities will be subject to the preferential rate of 10% under Section 27B NIRC, provided that its gross income from unrelated trade, business, or activity does not exceed 50% of its total gross income. As to the assets of the proper propriety non-profit hospital educational institution, Exempt as long as the property is ADE used for educational or charitable purposes. Again, Section 28, Paragraph 3, Article 6 of the Constitution. RPT exemption covers charitable institutions, churches, and parsonages or convents appurtenant thereto, mosques, and non-profit cemeteries and all lands, buildings, and improvements actually, directly, and exclusively used for charitable, religious, and educational purposes. The definition of terms. Let us define charitable institution. It is essentially provide for or it essentially provides for free goods and services to the public to an indefinite number of persons, which would otherwise fall on the shoulders of the government. CIR versus St. Luke's, GR number 203514-2017. What is exclusive? Exclusive is defined as possessed and enjoyed to the exclusion of others. They barred from participation or enjoyment and exclusively is defined in a manner to exclude as enjoying a privilege exclusively. The words dominant use or principal use cannot be equated with used exclusively. CIR versus St. Luke's, 
GR number 2035142017. As for the income tax exemption of charitable institution under the NIRC, a charitable institution does not lose its character as such and its exemption from taxes simply because it derives income from paying patients, whether outpatient or confined in the hospital, or receives subsidies from the government, so long as the money received is devoted or used altogether to the charitable object with which it is intended to achieve, and no money inures to the private benefit of the persons managing or operating the institution. CIR versus St. Luke's, GR number 203514-2017 Prohibition against taxation of non-stock, non-profit, educational institutions. Section 4, paragraphs 3 and 4 of the Article 14 of the Constitution. What is the test? How both the revenues and assets will be used. Exempts from taxes, all revenues and assets of non-stock, non-profit educational institutions actually, directly, and exclusively used for educational purposes. Exemption covers income, real estate tax, donor's tax, and customs duties, as distinguished from the previous provision, Section 28, Article, uh, Paragraph 3 of Article 6 of the Constitution, which pertains only to real property tax exemption granted to real properties that are used for religious, charitable, or educational purposes. Income is exempt provided it is used for maintenance or improvement of institution that is indispensable or essential. The exemption is strictly personal, that is, non-transferable. So, distinguished tax treatment of property educational institution, preferential tax rate of 10%, and government educational institution tax exempt. Example, the University of the Philippines. Majority vote of Congress for grant of tax exemption. Section 28, Paragraph 4, Article 6 of the Constitution. It includes amnesties, condonations, and refunds. It involves majority of all members voting separately. It is a relative majority or majority of quorum is sufficient to withdraw exemption. Prohibition on use of tax levied for special purposes. Section 29, Paragraph 3, Article 6 of the Constitution. Revenues derived for a special fund shall be administered for the purpose intended only. Once the purpose is achieved, the balance, if any, is to be transferred to the general funds of the government. The President's Veto Power on Appropriation, Revenue, and Tariff Bills Section 27, Paragraph 2, Article 6 of the Constitution The President shall have the power to veto any particular item or items in an appropriation, revenue, or tariff bill, but the veto shall not affect the item or items to which he does not object. Grant of power to the local government units to create its own sources of revenue. Section 5, Article 10 of the Constitution. Each local government unit shall have the power to create its own sources of revenues and to levy taxes, fees, and charges subject to such guidelines and limitations as the Congress may provide, consistent with the basic policy of local autonomy. Such taxes, fees, and charges shall accrue exclusively to the local governments. Flexible Tariff Clause, Section 28, Paragraph 2, Article 6 of the Constitution. The Congress may, by law, authorize the President to fix within specified limits and subject to such limitations and restrictions as it may impose tariff rates import and export quotas, 
tonnage and wharfage dues and other duties or imposts within the framework of the National Development Program of the government. No appropriation or use of public money for religious purposes. Section 29, Paragraph 2, Article 6 of the Constitution. No public money or property shall be appropriated, applied, paid, or employed directly or indirectly for the use, benefit, or support of any sect, church, denomination, sectarian institution, or system of religion, or of any priest, preacher, minister, other religious teacher, or dignitary as such, except when such priest, preacher, minister, or dignitary is assigned to the armed forces, or to any penal institution, or government orphanage, or leprosarium. Tax bills should originate exclusively in the House of Representatives. Section 24, Article 6 of the Constitution. All appropriation, revenue, or tariff bills, bills authorizing increase of public debt, bills of local application, and private bills, shall originate exclusively in the House of Representatives, but the Senate may propose or concur with amendments. Judicial power to review legality of tax. Section 5 to B, Article 8 of the Constitution. The Supreme Court shall have the power to review, revise, reverse, modify, or affirm on appeal or certiorari as the law or the rules of court may provide final judgments and orders of lower court in all cases involving the legality of any tax, imposed assessment or toll or any penalty imposed in relation thereto. Provisions directly affecting taxation. Due process. Section 1, Article 3 of the Constitution. Substantive due process. Tax should not be harsh, oppressive, or confiscatory, or the test of reasonableness. reasonableness. It should have by authority of a valid law. It must be for a public purpose and imposed within territorial jurisdiction. As to procedural due process, no arbitrariness in assessment and collection and the right to notice and hearing. It can also be invoked by the government. At the province of Abra versus Hernando, GR number L49336, 1981. No state may tax anything not within its jurisdiction without violating the due process clause. The taxing power of a state does not extend beyond its territorial limits, but within such it may tax persons, property, income, or business. Manila Gas versus Collector, GR number L-24780-1936. Equal Protection, Section 1, Article 3 of the Constitution. All persons subject to legislation shall be treated alike under like circumstances and conditions, both in privileges conferred and liabilities imposed. Season Jr. v. Ancheta, GR number L-59431-1984. No violation of equal protection when there is proper classification made. The classification to be valid must 1. Rest on substantial distinctions. 2. Be germane to the purpose of the law. 3. Not be limited to existing conditions only. And 4. Apply equally to all members of the same class. Examples. The sales tax is applied similarly on all goods and services sold to the public, which are not exempt at the constant rate of 0% or 
kapatiran ng mga naglilingkod sa pamahalaan ng Pilipinas Incorporated versus Time GR number 8131191988. The phrase except customs brokers is not meant to discriminate against custom brokers. It was inserted in section 103R to complement the provisions of section 102 of the code which makes the services of custom brokers subject to the payment of the VAT and to distinguish customs broker from other professionals who are subject to the payment of an occupation tax under the local tax code. Kapatiran ng mga naglilingkod sa pamalaan ng Pilipinas Incorporated versus TAN, GR number 8131-1988. The Equal Protection Clause recognizes a valid classification that is, a classification that has a reasonable foundation or rational basis and not arbitrary. Both the BIR and the BOC are bureaus under the DOF. They principally perform the special function of being the instrumentalities through which the state exercises one of its great inherent functions, taxation. Indubitably, such substantial distinction is germane and intimately related to the purpose of the law. Hence, the classification and treatment according to the BIR and the BOC under RA number 9335 fully satisfy the demands of equal protection. Bureau of Customs Employees Association versus Tevez, GR number 1817042010. Exception. Equal protection is not violated if a law or ordinance imposes tax on a name occupation, so long as it is not limited to a certain person or a certain group only. The fact that there is no other person in the locality with the same designation does not make the ordinance discriminatory because it will be applicable to any person or firm who exercises such occupation. Shell v. Vano, GR number L-6093-1954 Religious Freedom Section 5, Article 3 of the Constitution The constitutional guarantee of the free exercise and enjoyment of religious profession and worship carries with it the right to disseminate religious information. American Bible Society v. City of Manila, GR number L-9637-1957 Activities that are simply and purely for propagation of faith are exempt. Tax is unconstitutional if it operates as a prior restraint on exercise of religion or favors a certain religion or the non-establishment clause of religion. Income of religious organization from any activity conducted for profit or for from any of their property, real or personal, regardless of disposition of such income is taxable. Non-impairment of obligations of contracts, Section 10, Article 3 of the Constitution, applies only when government is party to the contract granting exemption. Exception. In case of franchise tax, the Constitution provides that franchise is subject to amendment, alteration, or repeal by Congress. Contractual tax exemptions in the real sense of the term and where the non-impairment clause of the Constitution can rightly be invoked are those agreed to by the taxing authorities in contracts, such as those contained in government bonds or debentures lawfully entered into by them under enabling laws in which the government, acting in its private capacity, sheds its cloak of authority and waives its governmental immunity. These contractual tax exemptions, however, are not to be confused with tax exemptions granted under franchises. A franchise partakes the nature of a grant which is beyond the purview of the non-impairment clause of the Constitution. Meralco v. Province of Laguna, GR number 1313591999. Example where impairments apply. The provision shall be in lieu of all taxes of every name and nature 
in the franchise, this court appointed or pointed out that such exemption is part of the inducement for the acceptance of the franchise and the rendition of public service by the grantee. As a charter is in the nature of private contract, the imposition of another franchise tax on the corporation by the local authority would constitute an impairment of the contract between the government and the corporation. Province of Misamis Oriental versus Cagayan Electric Power and Light Company Incorporated, GR number L4535599. Stages or aspects of taxation. Number one, first stage is to levy. Enactment of a law by Congress imposing a tax. Second stage, assessment and collection. Act of administration and implementation of the tax law by the executive department through the administrative agencies. Third stage, payment. Act of compliance by the taxpayer including such options, schemes, or remedies as may be legally available to him. General rule, no court shall have the authority to grant an injunction. General rule, no court shall have the authority to grant an injunction to restrain the collection of any national internal revenue tax, fee, or charge. Section 218. Exception. An injunction may be issued by the CTA to restrain the collection of taxes when, in the opinion of the court, the collection may jeopardize the interests of the government and or the taxpayer. The court, at any stage of the proceeding, may suspend the said collection and require the taxpayer either to deposit the amount claimed or to file a surety bond for not more than double the amount with the court. Section 11 RA 9282 as amended. The prohibition on the issuance of a writ of injunction to enjoin the collection of taxes is applied only to national internal revenue taxes, not to local taxes. However, the Supreme Court noted that such injunctions enjoining the collection of local taxes are frowned upon. Angeles City versus Angeles Electric Corporation, GR number 1661342010. Stage 4, refund. Recovery of any tax alleged to have been erroneously or illegally assessed or collected, or of any penalty claimed to have been collected without authority, or of any sum alleged to have been excessively or in any manner wrongfully collected. The definition, nature, and characteristic of taxes. Taxes is or are a burden, charge, exaction, imposition, or contribution assessed in accordance with some reasonable rule of apportionment by authority of the sovereign state upon the persons or properties within its jurisdiction to provide public revenues for the support of the government the administration of the law, or the payment of public expenses. 71 American Jurisprudence, 2nd edition, 343 to 346. Taxes operate in invitum, or against a person's will or consent, by force of law irrespective of assent, and are in no way dependent upon the will or contractual assent express or implied of the person taxed. Taxes are enforced, proportional, pecuniary contributions from persons and property levied by the lawmaking body of the state having jurisdiction over the subject of the burden for the support of the government and all public needs. PCGG versus COCOFED, GR number 147062 up to 64, 2001. Taxes are not political in nature, as such were continued in force during the period of enemy occupation and in effect were actually in force 
by the occupation government. Hilado versus Collector of Internal Revenue, GR number L-9408-1956. What are the sources of tax laws? First is the Constitution. Second, legislations or statutes, executive orders, local ordinances, or tax treaties. Third, administrative issuance by the DOF, BIR, or BOC. Fourth, rulings issued by the BIR and opinions of the DOJ. And number five, judicial decisions by the Supreme Court. What are the requisites of a valid tax? The requisites of a valid tax is or are Number one, must be for a public purpose. Two, should be uniform and equitable. Three, either the person or property tax is within the jurisdiction of the taxing authority. Four, complies with the requirements of due process. And five, does not infringe any constitutional or inherent limitations. What are the kinds of taxes? As to subject matter of, or object, A. Personal, capitation, or poll tax. It has fixed amount. It should cover individuals residing within specified territory without regard to their property, occupation, or business. Example, community tax or cedula. On property tax, it is imposed on property, real, or personal. It is in proportion to its value or other reasonable method of apportionment. Example, real estate tax. On excise or privilege tax, it is imposed upon the performance of an act, the enjoyment of a privilege, or the engagement in an occupation, profession, or business. This is different from the excise tax of Title VI of the NIRC. Example here is income tax, VAT, estate tax, and donors tax. 2. As to who bears the burden or incidence. Direct tax imposed on the person who also bears the burden thereof. Example, income tax, community tax, or estate tax. Indirect tax imposed on the taxpayer who shifts the burden of the tax to another. Maceda versus Macarayag Jr. 1991. Example, VAT, specific tax, percentage tax, and custom, custom duties. As a general rule, the proper party to seek a refund is the statutory taxpayer. Silk Air versus CIR GR number 173594-2008. Exception. If the law confers exemption from both direct or indirect taxes, claimant is entitled to a refund even if claimant is not the statutory taxpayer but only bears the economic burden of the tax. Philippine Airlines versus CIR GR number 1987592013. Number three, as to tax rates or determination of amount. A. Specific tax. Tax imposed and based on a physical unit of measure as by head, number, weight, length, or volume. Example, tax on distilled spirits, fermented liquors, or cigars. B. Ad valorem tax. Tax of a fixed proportion of the value of property with respect to which the tax is assessed requires intervention of assessors. Example, real estate tax, excise tax on cars, and non-essential goods, and mixed taxes. Four, as to purposes, 
A. General Fiscal or Revenue Tax Imposed for the general purpose of supporting the government. Example, income tax and percentage tax. B. Special or regulatory taxes. Imposed for a special purpose to achieve some social or economic objective. Example, protective tariffs or customs duties. 5. As to scope or authority to impose. A. National taxes. Imposed by the national government. Example, national internal revenue taxes, custom duties. And B. Municipal or local taxes. Imposed by the municipal corporation or local governments. Example, real estate tax or occupation tax. As to graduation of rate or the three systems of taxation. A. Progressive or graduated. Tax rate increases as the tax base or bracket increases. Example, income tax, estate tax, donors tax. Regressive tax. Tax rate decreases as the tax base increases. Proportionate or flat. Based on a fixed percentage of the amount of the property, income, or other basis to be taxed. Example, real estate tax, VAT percentage tax. And mix, the tax rates are partly progressive and partly regressive. General concepts in taxation. 1. The prospectivity of tax laws. This principle provides that a tax law must only be applicable and operative prospectively. Taxes may be imposed retroactively by law, but unless so expressed by such law, these taxes must only be imposed prospectively. Hydro Resources vs. CAGR No. 80276, 1990. Ex post facto is not applicable for tax purposes. However, when it comes to civil penalties like fines and forfeitures, except interest, tax laws may provide and allow its application retroactively unless it produces harsh and oppressive consequences which violate the taxpayer's constitutional rights regarding equity and due process. Fernandez v. Fernandez, GR number L-9141-1956, CIR v. Filipinas, Compañas de Seguros, GR number 14880-1960. In prescriptibility of tax laws. Although the NIRC provides for the limitation in the assessment and collection of taxes imposed, such will only be applicable to those taxes where a tax return is required. The prescriptive period shall start from the time the taxpayer files the tax return and declares his liability. Visaya Land Transportation Corporation versus Collector of Internal Revenue, GR number L-12100 and L-11812-1959. Unless otherwise provided by the tax law itself, taxes in general are imprescriptible. CIR v. Ayala Securities Corporation, GR number L-29485-1976. The law on prescription being a remedial measure should be interpreted liberally in favor of the taxpayer in order to protect the taxpayer. Republic v. Ablasa, GR number L-14519-1960. CITOS of Taxation CITOS is the place of taxation. Power to tax is limited to the territorial jurisdiction of the taxing state. It is the place or authority that has the right to impose and collect taxes. CIR v. Marabeni Corporation, GR No. 137377, December 18, 2001 Exception 
Where privity of relationship exists, the state can exercise its taxing powers over its citizen outside its territory. A. Situs of income tax. Factors that determine the situs of income tax. Section 23 and IRC. 1. Nationality. 2. Residency. And 3. Source of income from sources within the Philippines interest on bonds notes on other interest bearing obligations of residents of the Philippines residents of debtor rule dividends from domestic corporation from a foreign corporation if at least 50% of the foreign corporation's gross income for a three-year base period is derived from Philippine sources Compensation for services performed within the Philippines. Rentals and royalties from properties located in the Philippines or any interest in such property including rentals or royalties for the use of or for the privilege of using within the Philippines. Patents, copyrights, and other like properties. Sale of real property located in the Philippines. Sale of personal property by the producer or manufacturer. Sale of personal property produced by the taxpayer within and sold without the Philippines or produced without and sold within the Philippines shall be treated as derived from sources within and partly from sources without the Philippines. Conversely, sale of personal property produced within and sold within the Philippines or produced without and sold without the Philippines shall be treated as derived from sources entirely within the Philippines and entirely without the Philippines, respectively, by a taxpayer other than the producer or manufacturer. Gains, profit, and income derived from the purchase within and its sales without the Philippines or from the purchase without and its sale within shall be treated as derived entirely from sources within the country in which the personal property is sold. Exception Gains from the sale of shares of stock in a domestic corporation shall be treated as derived entirely from sources within the Philippines regardless where the said shares are sold. From sources without the Philippines. Interests other than those derived from sources within the Philippines. Dividends other than those derived from sources within the Philippines. Compensation for services performed without the Philippines. Rentals and royalties from property located without the Philippines or from any interest in such property including rentals or royalties for the use of or for the privilege of using without the Philippines, patents, copyrights, and other like properties. Income partly within and partly without the Philippines. Items other than those specified above in number one and number two shall be treated as derived partly from sources within and partly from sources without the Philippines. Situs of property taxes. Real property. Location of the property. Personal property for tangible properties. Location of the property. While for intangible personal property, domicile of the owner. Situs of excise tax. For estate tax, the situs is domicile of the decedent at the time of his death. For donor's tax, domicile of the donor at the time of the transfer. In summary, the object or the person, residence, domicile, citizenship. Real property, location of the property, Tangible personal property, the physical location although the owner resides in another jurisdiction. 
royalties where the use of or right to use is exercised. Income, citizenship, residence, source of income. Transfer of property, citizenship, residence, location of property. Business or occupation, where the act, business, occupation is performed or exercise. Double taxation. Direct double taxation in the strict sense. The same property is taxed twice when it should be taxed only once. Both taxes must be imposed. On the same property or subject matter, for the same purpose, by the same taxing authority, within the same jurisdiction or taxing district, and during the same period, and they must be of the same kind or character of tax. Villanueva versus City of Iloilo, GR number L-26521-1968. Indirect double tax, or in the broad sense. It means indirect duplicate taxation. It extends to all cases in which there are two or more pecuniary impositions. The Constitution does not prohibit the imposition of double taxation in the broad sense. Constitutionality of double taxation The Supreme Court held that there is no constitutional prohibition against double taxation in the Philippines. Villanueva v. City of Iloilo, GR No. L-26521-1968 Therefore, it may not be a valid defense against the validity of a tax measure. Pepsi Cola v. Tanawan, GR No. L-31156-1976 what is prohibited is direct double taxation. There is no double taxation in the following cases. 1. By taxing corporate income and tax tax holder dividend from the same corporation. 2. Tax imposed by the state and the local government upon the same occupation, calling, or activity. 3. Real estate tax and income tax collected on the same real estate property leased for earning purposes. Villanueva v. City of Iloilo, GR No. L-26521-1968 And number 4, taxes are imposed on taxpayers' final product and the storage of raw materials used in the production of the final product. Procter & Gamble Philippines v. Municipality of Hagna GR number L-24265-1979 Example Spouses are American citizens residing in the Philippines. Hence, they pay income taxes in the Philippines and federal income taxes in the U.S. The court held that double taxation becomes obnoxious only where the taxpayer is taxed twice for the benefit of the same governmental entity. In this case, while the taxpayers would have to pay two taxes on the same income, the Philippine government only receives the proceeds of one tax. Commissioner versus Lednicki, GR number L-18169-1964. Tax treaties as relief from double taxation. Modes of eliminating double taxation. Provide for exemptions or allowance of deduction or tax credit for foreign taxes. Enter into treaties with other states. Example, former FILA military basis agreements as to income tax or apply the principle of reciprocity. In the case of CIR versus CS Johnson & Sons Incorporated, GR number 12710591999. International juridical double taxation is defined as an imposition of comparable taxes in two or more states on the same taxpayer in respect of the same subject matter and for identical periods. In order to eliminate double taxation, a tax treaty is entered into by the two contracting states. The apparent rationale for doing away with double taxation is to encourage the free flow of goods and services and the movement of capital, technology, and persons between countries, conditions deemed vital in creating robust and dynamic economies. Escape from Taxation 
A. Shifting of tax burden. The imposition of tax is transferred from the statutory taxpayer to another without violating the law. Ways of shifting the tax burden, also known as FBO. 1. Forward shifting. The transfer of burden from the producer to the distributor under until it finally reaches the ultimate purchaser or consumer. 2. Backward shifting. The reverse of forward shifting. Example, the manufacturer has agreed to buy the supplier's product only if the price is reduced by the amount of tax. And 3. Onward shifting. The tax burden is shifted twice or more, either forward or backward. Taxes can be shifted in value-added tax, 2. Percentage tax, 3. Excise tax on excisable articles, and 4. Ad valorem taxes that oil companies pay to the Bureau of Internal Revenue upon removal of petroleum products from its refinery. Meaning of impact and incidence of taxation. Impact of taxation is defined as the point on which the tax is originally imposed or the one on whom the tax is formally assessed. The incidence of taxation is where the point on which the tax burden finally rests or settles down. Example, value-added tax is originally assessed against the seller who is required to pay the said tax, but the burden is actually shifted or passed on to the buyer. It is important to know where the impact of taxation lies, that is, who the statutory pay taxpayer is, because it will generally determine, one, the proper party to claim a refund of erroneously imposed indirect taxes, and two, whether the indirect taxes can be passed on to an exempt buyer. Tax avoidance, also called tax minimization, is a tax-saving device that is legally permissible. The court held that tax avoidance is the use of a tax-saving device within the means sanctioned by law. Any tax avoidance scheme should be used by the taxpayer in good faith and at arm's length. CIR versus Estate of Benigno Toda Jr., GR number. 1471882004 When a merger or reincorporation is undertaken for a bona fide purpose and not solely for the purpose of escaping the burden of taxation it is not evasion The question merger involved a pooling of resources aimed at the continuation and expansion of business and so came under the intendment of the NIRC exempting from the capital gains tax exchanges of property affected under lawful corporate combinations. Commissioner versus Rufino, GR number L 3365 to 1987. Tax evasion, on the other hand, connotes fraud through the use of pretenses and forbidden devices to lessen or defeat taxes, must be willful and intentional. It connotes the integration of three factors. One, end to be achieved, that is the payment of less than that known by the taxpayer to be legally due, or the non-payment of tax when it's shown that a tax is due. Two, accompanying state of mind which is described as being evil, in bad faith, willful, or deliberate and not accidental. And three, Course of action or failure of action which is unlawful. Toda Jr. versus CA number GR number 7858381990. The differences between tax evasion and tax avoidance. The other name for tax evasion is tax dodging, while tax avoidance is tax minimization. The means of uh, tax evasion is the use of illegal means while tax avoidance uses legal means. And uh, tax evasion is punishable by law while tax avoidance is legal and not punishable. 
and the object is to escape punishment, a payment of taxes for tax evasion, but in tax avoidance is to minimize payment of taxes. The willful blindness doctrine. An individual or corporation can no longer say that the errors on their tax returns are not their responsibility or that it is the fault of the accountant they hired. An act is willful if it is voluntary, conscious, and intentional. Bad motive or intent to defraud need not be shown. The only thing that needs to be shown is that the taxpayer is aware of his or her obligation to file annual income tax returns, but she nevertheless voluntarily, knowingly, and intentionally failed to file the required returns. People versus Quintanar, CTA EB number 006, 2010, affirmed by the Supreme Court in 2012. However, in the case of People versus Judy Ann Santos, CTA case number 102, 2013, affirmed by the Supreme Court in 2013, the CTA division acquitted Santos although the BIR asserted the same arguments it made in the Quintanar case. Santos was charged with failure to supply correct and accurate information in her ITR. She claimed that by virtue of trust, respect, and confidence, she entrusted her finances to her manager since she was a child. Here, the CTA division found that the element of willfulness and motive to commit fraud were one thing and that Santos were merely negligent. Unlike Santos, who did not know any better, Quintanar was an experienced businesswoman who ought to have known and understood all the matters concerning her business, including knowledge and awareness of her tax obligations concerning her business and should have ensured the correct filing of her returns. In People v. Quintanar, tax evasion connotes the integrity of the three factors. All elements are present, while in People v. Santos, it lacks the element of willfulness. In People v. Quintanar, willful in tax crimes means voluntary, intentional violation of a known legal duty, and bad faith or bad purpose need not be shown. In People v. Santos, the element of willful failure to supply correct and accurate information must be fully established as a positive act or state of mind. It cannot be presumed nor attributed to mere inadvertent or negligent acts. In Quintanar, it involves non-filing of income tax return, while in Santos, involves failure to supply correct and accurate information. Mere understatement of a tax is not itself proof of fraud, for the purpose of tax evasion. The elements of violation of Section 255 of the NIRC for failure to make or file a return are 1. The accused is a person required to make or file a return. 2. The accused failed to make or file the return at the time required by law. And three, the failure to make or file the return was willful. In People v. Santos, the element of the violation of Section 2554, failure to supply correct and accurate information are 1. That a person is required to supply correct and accurate information. 2. That there is failure to supply correct and accurate information at the time or times required by law or rules and regulations. And three, that such failure to supply correct and accurate information is done willfully. Exemption from taxation. Tax exemption is the grant of immunity to particular persons or corporations or to persons or corporations of a particular class from a tax which persons and corporations generally within the same state or taxing district are obliged to pay. It is an immunity or privilege. It is freedom from the financial charge or burden to which others are subjected. Greenfield versus Mir, GR number 156, 1946.
The nature of tax exemption is that exemption from taxes is personal in nature and covers only taxes for which the taxpayer grantee is directly liable. In any case, it cannot be transferred or assigned by the person to whom it is given without the consent of the state. Tax exemptions are strictly construed against the taxpayer because such provisions are highly disfavored and may almost be said to be odious to the law. Manila Electric Company versus Vera, GR number L-29987-1975. Exemptions are not presumed, but when public property is involved, exemption is the rule and taxation the exception. General rule, exemptions are not presumed. Exception, when public property is involved, that is, exemption is the rule and taxation the exception. There can be no simultaneous exemptions under two laws, one partial and the other total. What are kinds of tax exemption? A. Express or affirmative tax exemption. When certain persons, property, or transactions are by express provision exempted from all or certain taxes, either entirely or in part. Examples of statutory tax exemptions. 1. Intercorporate dividends by a domestic corporation from another domestic corporation. 2. Section 105 of the Tariff and Customs Code, 3. Section 234 of the Local Government Code, and 4. Other special laws such as Omnibus Investment Code of 1987 and Philippine Overseas Shipping Act. B. Implied or by omission exemption. When a tax is levied on certain classes of person, properties, or transactions without mentioning the other classes, every tax statute makes exemptions since all those not mentioned are deemed exempted. The omission may either be accidental or intentional. C. Contractual exception. Those lawfully entered into the government in contracts under existing laws. This exemption must not be confused with tax exemptions granted under franchises, which are not contracts within the context of non-impairment clause of the Constitution. Agayan Electric Corporation vs. CIRJR No. L-60126-1985 The mere undertaking of NPC under the agreement that it shall be responsible for the payment of all real estate taxes and assessments does not justify the exemption of FELS, a private company. The privilege granted to NPC cannot be extended to FELS. FELS Energy Incorporated versus Province of Batangas, GR number 168557 and 1706282007. <clears throat> the rationale or grants for exemption A presumption that the public interest will be subserved by the exemption allowed Grants of exemption rest upon that such will benefit the body of the people and not upon any idea of lessening the burden of the individual owners of property Purpose is the same public benefit or interest which the lawmaking body considers sufficient to offset the monetary loss entailed in the grant of exemptions. Created in a treaty on grounds of reciprocity or to lessen the rigors of the international double or multiple taxation and equity is not a ground for exemption. Revocation of tax exemption. Tax exemption is generally revocable. The congressional power to grant an exemption necessarily carries with it the subsequent power to revoke the same. In order to be irrevocable, the tax exemption must be founded on a contract or granted by the Constitution. 
By way of exception, a contractual tax exemption obtained from the state for a valid and material consideration of a mutual nature cannot be revoked without impairing the obligation of contracts under the Constitution. Mactan Cebu International Airport Authority v. Marcos, GR No. 1-2008-2-1996. Meralco v. Province of Laguna, GR No. 1-3-1-3-5-9-1999. Equitable recoupment. When a taxpayer is entitled to a claim for refund but he has not able to file a written claim within the prescribed time, the taxpayer is allowed to credit the amount for refund against his existing liability. This is not allowed in the Philippines and is applied in common law countries. Prohibition and Compensation and Set-off Taxes are not subject to set-off or legal compensation because the government and the taxpayer are not mutual creditor and debtor of each other. Republic versus Mambulao Lumber Corporation, GR number L-17725-1962. Caltex Philippines versus COA, GR number 92585-1992. Taxes are not subject to set off or compensation for the following reasons. Number one, taxes are of distinct kind, essence, and nature, and these impositions cannot be classed in merely the same category as ordinary obligations. Two, the applicable laws and principles governing each are peculiar, not necessarily common to each other. And three, public policy is better subserved if the integrity and independence of taxes are maintained. Republic versus Mambulao Lumber Corporation GR number L-17725-1962 A person cannot refuse to pay tax on the basis that the government owes him an amount equal to or greater than the tax being collected. The collection of a tax cannot await the results of a lawsuit against the government. Felix Mining Corporation versus CIR GR number 125704-1998 Francia v. Intermediate Appellate Court, GR No. L-67649-1988 In several cases, as an exception to offsetting, the court may have allowed the determination of the taxpayer's liability in a refund case, thereby allowing the offsetting of taxes. In these cases, offsetting was allowed because the determination of the taxpayer's liability is intertwined with the resolution for the claim of refund. In the case of TPC, wherein it filed a claim for refund or credit under Section 112 of the NIRC, while the issue to be resolved is whether TPC is entitled for its unutilized input but the offsetting was not allowed. The court held that since it is not a claim for refund under Section 229 of the NIRC, the correctness of TPC's VAT returns is not an issue. Hence, the determination of the taxpayer's liability was not related with the resolution of the claim for refund or credit offsetting was also not an issue. CIR versus Toledo Power Corporation, GR number 1964152015. Compromise Generally allowed and enforceable when subject matter thereof is not prohibited from being compromised and the person entering such compromise is duly authorized to do so. The law allows the following person to do compromise on behalf of the government. 1. BIR Commissioner as expressly authorized by the NIRC subject to certain conditions. 2. Collector of customs, with respect to customs duties limited to cases where the legitimate authority is specifically granted such in the remission of duties, Section 709, Tariffs and Customs Code, and 3. Customs Commissioner, subject to the approval of the Secretary of Finance in cases involving the imposition of fines, surcharges, and forfeitures. 
Section 2316, Tariffs and Customs Code. Tax Amnesty. It is the general or intentional overlooking by the state of its authority to impose penalties on persons otherwise guilty of evasion or violation of a revenue or tax law. It partakes of an absolute forgiveness or waiver of the government of its right to collect. It is a way to give tax evaders who wish to relent and are willing to perform or reform a chance to do so. It refers to the articulation of the absolute waiver by a sovereign of its right to collect taxes and proper to impose or power to impose penalties on persons or entities guilty of violating a tax law. Tax amnesty aims to grant a general reprieve to tax evaders who wish to come clean by giving them an opportunity to straighten out their records. Amnesty taxpayers may immediately enjoy the privileges and immunities under a tax amnesty law, provided they fulfill the suspensive condition imposed therein. CS Government Incorporated vs. CIR GR number 1823992014 A tax amnesty, much like a tax exemption, is never favored or presumed in law. The grant of a tax amnesty similar to a tax exemption must be construed strictly against the taxpayer and liberally in favor of the taxing authority. Asia International Auctioners vs. CIR GR number 1791152020 Distinguish tax amnesty from tax exemption. The scope of immunity in tax amnesty, immune from payments of taxes as well as additions thereto and the appurtenant civil, criminal, and administrative penalties under the NIRC. In exemption, immunity from civil liability only. To whom granted? Amnesty is general pardon given to all taxpayers, while for exemption to persons exempted by law, freedom from a charge or burden to which others are subjected. As to the application, amnesty applies only to past tax periods, hence retroactive application, while exemption generally prospective in application. The presence of actual revenue loss in amnesties there is an actual revenue loss since there is actually taxes due but collected, collection was waived by the government. And in exemption, none because there was no actual tax due as the person or transaction is protected by tax exemption. When enjoyment of the immunities and privileges begins, Neither the 2007 Tax Amnesty Law nor Department of Finance or DOF Order No. 29-07 or the IRR of the Tax Amnesty Law imposes a waiting period of one year before the applicant can enjoy the benefits of the tax amnesty. It can be surmised from the provisions of the law that the law intended the immediate enjoyment of the immunities and privileges of tax amnesty upon fulfillment of the requirements. The one-year period referred to in the law should thus be considered only as a prescriptive period within which third parties, that is, parties other than the BIR or its agents, can question the sal n, not as a waiting period during which the BIR may contest the sal n and the taxpayer prevented from enjoying the immunities and privileges under the law. CS Garment Incorporated versus CIR GR number 1823992014 Other doctrines not included in the syllabus 1 taxpayer suit nature and concept of a taxpayer suit not every action filed by a taxpayer can qualify to challenge the legality of official acts done by the government a taxpayer suit can prosper only if the governmental acts being questioned involve disbursement of public funds and upon the theory that the expenditure of public funds by an officer 
of the state for the purpose of administering an unconstitutional act constitutes a misapplication of such funds, which may be enjoined at the request of the taxpayer. Dean Jose Hoya versus PCGG, GR number 96541-1993. A taxpayer suit is properly brought only when there is an exercise of the spending or taxing power of Congress. Automotive Industry Workers Alliance versus Romolo, GR number 1575092005. There is no need to show proof of direct injury as a result of the action. It is sufficient for the petitioner to have a general interest common to all members of the public. Maceda versus Makaray, GR number 888. 291-1991 As distinguished from citizen suit, taxpayers are allowed to sue, for example, where there is a claim of illegal disbursement of public funds or where a tax measure is assailed as unconstitutional. Voters are allowed to question the validity of election laws because of their obvious interest in the validity of such laws. Concerned citizens can bring suits if the constitutional question they raise is of transcendental importance, which must be settled early. Legislators are allowed to sue to question the validity of any official action which they claim infringes their prerogatives. COA legislators. Kilos Bayan v. Murato, GR No. 1189101995 Suit Taxpayer suit is to claim of illegal disbursement of public funds and where a tax measure is assailed as unconstitutional. In citizens' suit, if the constitutional question may ra they raise is of transcendental importance, which must be settled early. For voter suit, validity of election laws because of their obvious interest in the validity of such laws and legislators' validity of any official action which they claim infringes their prerogatives as legislators. Case law in most jurisdictions now allows both citizen and taxpayer standing in public actions. The Castro v. JBCGR No. 1910. The distinction was first laid down in Bukham v. Silk. The plaintiff in a taxpayer suit is in a different category from the plaintiff in a citizen suit. In the former, the plaintiff is affected by the expenditure of public funds, while the latter, he is but the mere instrument of the public concern. As held by the New York Supreme Court in People, uh, X Rel Case versus Collins, in matter of mere public right, the people are the real parties. It is at least the right, if not the duty, of every citizen to interfere and see that a public offense be properly pursued and punished, and that a public grievance be remedied. With respect to taxpayer suit, the right of the citizen and the taxpayer to maintain an action in courts to restrain the unlawful use of public funds to his injury cannot be denied. Ter versus Jordan. Requisites of a taxpayer suit challenging the constitutionality of a tax measure or act of a taxing authority, concept of locus standi, Doctrine of Transcendental Importance and Ripeness for Judicial Determination A. Requisites of taxpayer suit challenging the constitutionality of a tax measure or act of a taxing authority. To constitute a taxpayer suit, two requisites must be met, namely that 1. Public funds are disbursed by a political subdivision or instrumentality and in doing so, a law is violated or some irregularity is committed. And two, petitioner is directly affected by the alleged ultra vires act. Anti Graph League versus San Juan, GR number nine seven seven eight seven ninety ninety six. Concept of locustandi. Another requisite rooted 
in the very nature of judicial power is locus standi or standing to sue. This generally, a party will be allowed to litigate only when he can demonstrate that one, he has personally suffered some actual or threatened injury because of the allegedly illegal conduct of the government. Two, the injury is fairly traceable to the challenge action. And three, the injury is likely to be redressed by the remedy being sought. Oliver Lozano versus Speaker Nograles, GR number 1878832009. The doctrine of transcendental importance. Determinants whether or not a matter is of transcendental importance. 1. The character of the funds or other assets involved in the case. 2. The presence of a clear case of disregard of a constitutional or statutory prohibition by the public respondent agency or instrumentality of the government. And 3. The lack of any other party with a more direct and specific interest in the questions being raised. Creba versus ERC and Meralco, GR number 1746972010, citing Senate of the Philippines versus Irmita, GR number 1697772006, and Francisco versus Nagmamalasakit na mga manggagawang Pilipina Incorporated, GR number 1602612003, citing Kilos Bayan versus Gingona, GR number 1133759094. Rightness for judicial determination. An aspect of the case or controversy requirement is the requisite of rightness. The question before the court must be right for adjudication. For example, that the government act being challenged must have an adverse effect on the person challenging it. PACU versus Secretary of Education, 97 Philippine 806, 1995. 1955. The case must fall within the purview of an actual controversy that is ripe for judicial determination. The apprehension of the respondent that it could be rendered technically insolvent through the imposition of a iniquitous taxes was merely a speculation or conjecture. It is arguing based on probabilities, not actualities. The court ruled that the action was prematurely filed for a justiciable controversy refers to an existing case or controversy that is appropriate or ripe for judicial determination, not one that is conjectural or merely anticipatory. Commissioner of Internal Revenue versus Standard Insurance Corporation Incorporated, GR number 21934-2018. Another approach is the evaluation of the twofold aspect of ripeness. One, the fitness of the issues for judicial decision, and two, the hardship to the parties entailed by withholding court consideration. In our jurisdiction, the issue of ripeness is generally treated in terms of actual injury to the plaintiff. Hence, a question is ripe for adjudication when the act being challenged has had a direct adverse effect on the individual challenging it. Oliver Lozano v. Speaker Nograles, GR No. 1878832009. The power to tax is the power to destroy. Justice Marshall in McCullough versus Maryland, 4 we 3164LM579607, said that the power to tax involves the power to destroy. Taxation is a destructive power which interferes with the personal and property right of the people and takes from them a portion of their property for the support of the government. On the other hand, Justice Holmes in Penhandle Oil Corporation versus Mississippi 277 US 1218 declared that the power to tax is not the power to destroy while this court sits. If the power to tax is used to implement the state's power, police power to discourage and ultimately prohibit certain activities, 
inimical to the public welfare, this is permissible as a power to destroy. If the power to tax is solely for the purpose of general welfare or raising revenue, it can not be used to destroy nor to confiscate. In this sense, this can be attacked on the basis of constitutionality or a valid exercise of legislative power. Hence, in Rojas v. CTA, GR number L-25043, 1968, the Supreme Court said, The power to tax is sometimes called the power to destroy. Therefore, it should be exercised with caution to minimize injury to the propriety rights of a taxpayer. Construction and Interpretation of Tax Laws, Rules, and Regulations As to tax laws, it is a general rule that tax laws are construed liberally in favor of the government and strictly against the taxing authority. In case of doubt, tax statutes are construed strictly against the government and liberally in favor of the taxpayer. CIR versus CA, GR number 1071351999. Taxes being burdens are not to be presumed beyond what the statute expressly and clearly declared. Tax statutes offering rewards are liberally construed in favor of informers. Exception, where the language of the tax statute is plain and there is no doubt as to the legislative intent. In such case, the words employed are to be given their ordinary meaning. As to tax exemptions and exclusions, as a general rule, exceptions are not favored are, and are construed strictissime iuris against the taxpayer. An exemption from the common burden cannot be permitted to exist upon vague implication or inference. Taxation is the rule where exemption is the exception. Therefore, whoever claims exemption must be able to justify his claim or right thereto by a grant expressed in terms too plain to be mistaken and too categorical to be misinterpreted. If not expressly mentioned by law, it must at least be within a purview by clear legislative intent. Claims for refund partakes of the nature of tax exemptions and will not be allowed unless granted in the most explicit and categorical language. Exceptions 1. When the law itself expressly provides for a liberal construction, that is, in case of doubt, it shall be resolved in favor of exemption. Two, when the exemption is in favor of the government itself or its agencies, because the general rule is that they are exempt from tax. Three, when the exemption refers to religious, charitable, and educational institutions. And four, when there is an express mention and when the taxpayer falls within the purview of the exemption by clear legislative intent, the rule on strict construction does not apply. On tax rules and regulations, the construction placed by the office charged with implementing and enforcing the provision of the NIRC should be given given controlling weight unless such interpretation is clearly erroneous. Taxpayers cannot be deprived of their entitlement to the benefit of a treaty for failure to strictly comply with an administrative issuance requiring the prior application for tax treaty relief. At most, the application for a tax treaty relief from the BIR should merely operate to confirm the entitlement of the taxpayer to the relief. The denial of a tax relief based on a tax treaty due to the failure of a taxpayer to comply with a RMO would impair the value of the tax treaty and the state's duty to comply in good faith with the tax treaty. Deutsche Bank AG Manila, 
versus CIR GR number 1885502013 The non retroactivity of ruling section 246 any revocation, modification, or reversal of any of the rules and regulations promulgated in accordance with the preceding sections or any of the rulings or circulars promulgated by the commissioner shall not be given retroactive application if the revocation, modification, or reversal will be prejudicial to the taxpayers, except in the following cases. A. Where the taxpayer deliberately misstates or omits material facts from his return or any document required of him by the Bureau of Internal Revenue. B. Where the facts subsequently gathered by the Bureau of Internal Revenue are materially different from the facts in which the ruling is based. Or C. Where the taxpayer acted in bad faith. Penal provisions of tax laws. Strict construction so as not to intend the plain terms thereof that might create offenses by mere implication, not so intended by the legislative body. People versus Martin, GR number L-38019-1980. That ends the general principles for taxation law of reviewer 2021.